Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again for joining me on this Sunday afternoon, this kickoff Sunday. Amen. And um, thank you for joining me on this Promise LA page. I am excited as we come to this Sunday and we kick off a brand new series called Faith is the Victory. Faith is the Victory. And, and you know, this whole s series is based upon the fact that God has us and calls us to victory. Amen. To a victorious lifestyle, victory over temptation, obviously victory over sin and death because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, obviously over temptation, and into a whole new life that God calls us to. Amen. And so we're, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit because the truth of the matter is not many believe that to be true. Not many believe that uh, there's a whole new level to this to this walk with God that we have, and uh, 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 what we call a victory walk. Amen. And uh, and and so I wanted to talk about that a, a little bit for the next few weeks. What does it take for you to live a life of victory? You know, we started this year with a theme called pursuing God's best. Pursuing God's best for our city, you know, and, and, and it has been my heart uh, and, and, and my hope to, to, that the people of Los Angeles and the people of listening here online would pursue God's best for you because he has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has an expected end for you. And, and, and the thing that uh, I wanted to talk about in this particular series, that, that it starts with your faith it starts with how you look at faith okay here's the here's the the, the scripture that i want to talk to you about here um this this morning and as we start off this uh this series we're, we're gonna we're gonna park ourselves a little bit throughout this series in in first john chapter 5 verse 4 where, where uh john the, the Bible, and he considers himself and refers to himself the one whom Jesus loved. Amen. Uh, he says here in 1 John 5, 4, And whatever is born of God, amen, who is born of God out there, who's, who's put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and born again, right? And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world our faith have you ever known what it's like to overcome this the, the 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 traps of this world it's temptations it's lifestyles it's it's way in which it conducts itself that leads ultimately to death uh, it's tragedies it's pain what does it take to overcome it says this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith it, it tells me that we who are born again in Christ Jesus who have put our faith and trust in in the work of the cross what awaits us is victory what awaits us is is the the power to overcome the the snares of this world the snares of this of the devil and, and eternal life and, and, and the question is, what is faith? You ever consider that? Well, there's a lot of people that will tell you, well, faith is, is the same thing. Uh, I have faith. I believe. I believe in God's existence. I believe that he's real. I believe there is a God, right? Have you heard that before? You know? But here's the thing. As we define this a little bit further, and we're going to take a little bit more time over this series to to even unpack it a little bit further. There's a difference between belief and faith. Because beliefs, we, we, we believe in something, right? We, and, and as long as that something or that it's a, whatever belief system you have works out to be good for you, then you'll continue to believe it. Amen? There, there, there's no reason to believe in something if it's not good for you and if it doesn't work out for your good. But faith is a little bit different. 
faith is 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 actually trusting which is which to be honest with you that's that's what faith actually means in the in the original greek is the word pistis which which means to trust see believe says you're going to believe in something faith says i'm going to believe in someone in god that god is good and that he does good and has a good plan for me even when things don't look good amen See, beliefs will, will leave you at a place where where you can can believe in something until it's no longer good for you. Faith is will, will lead you down a road, maybe even on the edge of a cliff, still believing that God is good and He does good and has a great, good plan for you even things, when things don't look good. Amen? And when, and when you continue to have that kind of faith, God honors it, God, God, God uh, uh, looks upon it, and he rewards it, and he is pleased with it, and he's glorified by it. Amen? And that's the type of faith that overcomes the world, is your faith. Amen? Is your faith. The Bible has, has a lot of things to talk about faith. It says in, in Romans 1, 17, it says the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith in in uh, Hebrews eleven six. but without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to, of those who diligently seek him it's faith that helps you overcome the world it's faith that will lead you from a place of where you are now to, to great lengths in your, in your walk with God and your purpose in God. Amen? It, it, is, it is in this series we're going to talk about how, how your faith operates in your relationship with God. Uh, uh, how your faith operates in overcoming temptation and obviously overcome the works of the devil. Amen? And how faith will operate in your purpose but today I want to talk a little bit how your faith in, in your your faith that overcomes the world operates in your salvation I mean obviously it, it's it's in your salvation but your faith in the finished work of the cross right and everything will hinge upon this because if, if if this type of faith is not operating in, in the finished work of the cross, meaning in your salvation, your, what leads you to eternal life, then without it, nothing else matters. Without the proper faith in, in the finished work of the cross, you don't have to worry about having the proper faith in your relationship with God. Because without the cross, there is no relationship with God. Without, without the cross, there is no no uh, overcoming temptation or the devil and without the cross there is no faith in your purpose that God has for you so I, I want to make a special emphasis on this on this message today because without the cross it doesn't mean much your faith doesn't mean much as a matter of fact Paul tells tells that to the Corinthian church uh, is that w without without the resurrection your faith is in vain. And so I want to talk a little bit about what it means to have an over overcomer's faith, a victorious faith in the finished work of the cross. In, in all that Christ had accomplished when he came to the cross at Calvary and where he died for our sins and on the third day he rose again. What does it mean? Now, when I say this, I want to put a disclaimer out there or a disclosure when I talk about this type of faith I'm not if it doesn't look like your faith I'm not saying you're not saved that's not for me to tell you you know and God knows whether or not you're saved it doesn't mean that you're not going to heaven one day if your faith doesn't look like this what we're about to talk about today that's not what I'm saying I am just a servant just like you are, a child who, who has been saved by his grace through faith. And so it's not for me to tell you whether or not you're saved. 
But what I do want to tell you is that, and to encourage you, is so what does your faith look like? What does it look like? An overcomer's faith. Amen. A victorious faith. As it, as it deals with the work of Jesus Christ, the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Let me give you something uh, to, to consider before we get into that. Here, here's a scripture that we talk about when we, when, we, when we tell people what it takes to be saved. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not, not of works, lest that any man should boast. That grace is God's unmerited favor. It is his goodness on display. When, when the epitome of God's grace is when he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. It's nothing we could earn. It's nothing we deserve by any means. But because of who God is, he paid the debt of our sin by sending Jesus Christ to the cross. And all we need to do is to put our faith in that act. And all we need to do is, is, is trust that the, the cross of, Christ, of Christ is sufficient for our salvation. We, can, we can't do anything to gain it more. We can't do anything to deserve it more. The cross is enough. And when you activate that type of faith, it, it will launch you. It will unleash a new set of values it will it will unleash you into a new lifestyle and it will bring you to a new hope a new hope oh this world needs a new hope today amen and we need a new hope in which to stand we need a new hope to jump into expectation and what does that look like when that type of faith that we activate brings us to a new set of values when, when it brings us to a, a whole new lifestyle and it, it brings us to a, to a hope that lives inside of us, what does that look like? How is that faith tangible? How do we notice that type of faith? In order for me to, to illustrate further, I want to take you to another verse. It found in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It is, a, it is another verse that we use that we talks about our, our, our salvation, talks about the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, if you have your Bible, it said the Apostle Paul is writing this to the people in Rome, at the church in Rome. He says this, and many of you are very familiar with this. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, then you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This, this verse, it seems like this passage is only two verses, but it can unpack a whole heck of a lot. And we're going to try to do that today. Amen? But before we do that, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would speak to us today. And Lord, what it is, this faith that it is that you're calling us to, this faith that we put on display, this faith that we live out, that, that brings us to victory, that brings us to overcome this world, which have left us so high and dry. Oh God, I pray that once again you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that you would increase and that I would decrease for sure, that your word would be spoken, and that, and that Lord, it shall not return unto you void, but it will accomplish all that you set it out to do. I pray that your word would fall on the as seed on the fertile grounds of our heart, that you would be glorified, and that we would have had a fresh encounter with you. Anoint me as your vessel today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The first thing I want you to know, based on what we find in Romans 10 verse 9, is that your faith 
must be vocal. Your faith must be vocal. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You have to confess him with your mouth. Amen. Not lip knowledge, not lip syncing, but you have to be vocal. It's not about works, but it's about what's in your heart. It's about believing and confessing. Because let's face it, that what you believe in, you'll confess. That what you have that is so saturates your heart will eventually come out of your mouth. Amen? Is that really necessary? Oh, Pastor Daniel, I have a, I'm very private about my faith. Oh, Pastor Daniel, it's between me and God. It's between me and Jesus. I don't need to be vocal. It's just private, and I don't want to tell anybody else what to do. But consider this. Whatever it is that we believe, we will confess eventually. Amen? Oh, we have beliefs about the political system. Whether you're red or whether you're blue or whether you're gray and up and down the middle, we vocalize what we believe of our political, uh, what our political influence is. Amen. We're, we're very vocal on, on what is good and right and moral. Amen. Uh, I mean, come on now. We're very vocal about what we believe, which football team is the best. All out through that, to, throughout today, there's people putting on jerseys and t-shirts and going out and watching the game and putting up posts on Facebook and, and Instagram and, and will tell you why their team is the best. Quite honestly, if you'll notice, I'm wearing a navy blue shirt today because I'm going to go watch my team play today too. And we're very vocal about the things that we believe and we're very vocal about, about why we believe that our team is the best. And that's why social media thrives. That's why mainstream media thrives. Because what we're vocal in. And because what we believe, we will eventually confess. What we believe will, will eventually defend and, and, and stand for. Because that's what we believe. But when it comes to Jesus, we can be very silent sometimes. Amen. We could be very silent sometimes. And, and the Apostle Paul, he is, he is challenging the people there in Rome. Saying, if you truly believe, you'll confess him with your mouth as the Lord Jesus. And let me tell you, back in those days, when they said the Lord Jesus, there was, they, were, they were open to persecution. Because to the Roman Empire, to the people in Rome... If they called anybody else Lord other than other than Caesar, who, who people thought he was deity, they, they, they were open to persecution and even death. When they go to the Jewish people that were in Rome, the, to say Jesus is Lord, the word there is, is curious, which in the original translation in the Hebrew was, was spelled out Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. They wouldn't even... They wouldn't even say that word because they thought that word was, was too holy for them to say it. But to be vocal and, and calling Jesus Yahweh or God or Lord was, was blasphemy and subject to death. Oh, the, back, in, back in those days, the Apostle Paul was telling him, be vocal about your faith. Be vocal about, about what it is that, that you believe and what you stand for and what you say you'll defend. And back in those days, nobody in their right mind would call Jesus Lord if they truly didn't believe it. I want to challenge you today. If you truly believe that He is your Lord, then be vocal about it. Oh, you may not suffer the persecution that, that the people back in those days did, but let me tell you something when you're vocal about Jesus it helps you because when you're vocal about certain things whether it's political whether it's moral or whether it's football you remember why it is you put your faith there you, you, when you're vocal about your faith in Jesus Christ you remember you remember because we're, we're, we're forgetful people amen if we're going to be honest 
you remember that's where you're putting your faith in. You remember what great salvation that, that's been given to you by the, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You remember, you remember of how much He loves you. You remember of how much uh, he's, he, 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 that He loves you so much that He sent His only Son into this world that He would pay our penalty for the cross. And when you, we may not suffer, suffer persecution these days, but there's a challenge for us in First Peter chapter three verse fifteen, where it says, "Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that is in you." Always be ready to give a defense. Always be ready to tell people why you have this living hope, and this and this hope is what people need today. This hope that, that, that people put in this world, the hope that people put into the treasures, the hope that people put into to worldly relationships. They, put, they, they stake their claim into this world from the time they were born to the time that they leave this world. They put their hope in. And you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, need to tell them that, that there's a different hope and his name is Jesus. We give them our hope, we share our hope in his word by telling them what the word says. We, 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 get, we share our hope by, by sharing our testimony. We share our hope by telling them that th they can have this hope too. It's, it's free to, to whoever, should, should, to whoever who shall come to him in faith. Amen. And when you can do that, that, fa that faith that, that overcomes the word, the world starts to grow in you starts to strengthen in you all of a sudden the the effects of this world it, it's it's shortcomings it's 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 hurts it's tragedies all those things have have a little bit less effect on you than it once did oh i know that this world is full of tragedy i have good friends and family that's going through it now but the more and more you put your faith in Jesus Christ the more and more you realize that we're destined for a future where we will have no more pain no more sorrow no more tears and no more death and that faith that 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 starts to build up inside of you will overcome the world and and, and all the tragedies thereof amen your faith must be vocal not just for the sake of the people but for the sake of yourself it, it must be vocal oh will you share it with me right now as you're listening to this me message will you just shout out his name right where you are Man, where, whether, wherever you are in the, in, in the city will you shout out his name come on I'll be the start Jesus oh shout out his name with me Jesus Shout out his name, whom you put your faith in. Shout out his name today. Let your faith be vocal. And let's shout out his name to wherever wherever you are in this city and wherever you are in this world. Let your faith be vocal. Don't, don't be silent about it. Don't be silent about it. We're louder about things that won't even last. But our faith in Jesus will last in this world and the world that comes after. Amen. The next thing I want to share with you is that your faith in the finish of the work of the cross is relational. It's relational. The, the Bible says here in the second part of verse 9, it says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead, then you will be saved. It talks about the resurrection. It says that if you believe in your heart that he's been raised, that's the resurrection. The entirety of of the work of our salvation is found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection illustrates the power to overcome the grave, it, the, the power to overcome sin, and the power, the power that overcomes this world. It is that power that reconciles us back to God. It is the power that brings us to a relationship. Amen? It is that power that 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 in that relationship that helps us that 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 helps us overcome 
this world. In 2 Corinthians 5.18 it says this, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation is nothing but a restored relationship. Because of the resurrection, we have a restored relationship with God. You know, let me illustrate that even further. In John chapter 20, verses 14 through 16, we find the story of Mary as she's going through that grieving process, the, the days of mourning after Jesus was, was uh, buried, after he was, res after he was crucified on the cross. And on that third day, she comes to the tomb looking. I don't know what she was planning on doing. Maybe, maybe she was still mourning. Maybe she was still visiting his gravesite because she was still in hurt. Maybe she was thinking about um, whether or not the, the, the purification process, what the, what the um, Jewish people used to do is put spices and herbs upon the body for purification reasons, religious reasons. I don't know what she was doing there, but when she got there, the body was gone, of course, because we know he was resurrected, amen? And, and, and when, and when uh, she came to, to Jesus, she didn't recognize him, and she thought she was maybe the maintenance man or the gardener or whatever, and she said, hey, if you've taken the body of Jesus, if you've taken him, please tell me and I'll bring him back. Please, take, please tell me where you put him. I'll put him back in his grave. I don't know how she was going to do that, but she wanted to do that. And Jesus tells her, calls her, and she says, Mary. And at the sound of her, Jesus calling her name, she recognizes Jesus. See, at the, at the point where Jesus calls us by name, our faith is no longer a, a cultural faith or a uh, 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 a religious faith it is no longer a, a, a historical event he is, it is no longer uh, a religious ritual it becomes personal amen he called him he called her by name and he said Mary it denotes relationship it, it illustrates relationship and he calls each and every one of us by name he knows our name, amen. He knows the number of, of, of hair that's in our on our head because it's personal. He calls us to relationship. See, our faith in, in the in the finished work of Jesus is not based on, on whether or not we're a chosen people like the Jew, Jewish people thought. It's based on our relationship with Jesus. It's not based on, on how much knowledge we have, like some of the philosophers, the Greek philosophers during that time thought, whether or not they, they knew, knew well enough, whether, whether or not the, the, that it, it matched well with their wisdom and their, and, their, and their learning. You know, some of us do that today, whether how much scripture we know and how much it matches the, the original verbiage. You know, and how much it, 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 how much we know of the lexicon or the Strong's Concordance or, or this verse or that verse and how that's what's translated. It's not based on knowledge. It's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of us base our faith on, on experience. It's not based on experience. It's based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we, I want you to know today. When, when, you have, when you need a faith and you want a faith that overcomes the world, when you want to have a victorious faith, it's not based on your lineage. It's not based on your past experiences, religious experiences. It's not based on, on what you believe your belief system is. It's, it's based on your, on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything that's of power, everything that's of victory, everything that's of, of overcoming this world is based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. He will lead you to victory. He will lead us to, to overcome this world because of our relationship. Amen. The last thing I want to share with you is that your faith in the finished work of the cross is life changing. It'll change your life. In verse 10 it says, For with the heart one, one believes unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see here, when, when, when there's a correlation of what you believe and what you confess, something starts to happen. Your life starts to change. Righteousness in Christ starts to develop in you. It starts to develop in you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me illustrate that as well. In Acts chapter 2, if you remember the story in Acts chapter 2, the, the Holy Spirit comes upon the believers in Christ on Pentecost, right? 50 days after Jesus um, resurrected from the dead and ascends into heaven. And, 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 and Peter starts to give the greatest sermon ever told when he tells them about the resurrection of Jesus. And, and, and in, in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 39, it says this, Now when they heard this, they heard the message about the resurrection, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The people, when they heard the message of the resurrection, that Jesus Christ was, did not die and he was no longer in the grave, that he resurrected from the, from the dead, as, as, was, as the scripture said. And when they heard that story, the, the Bible says that they were cut to the heart. There was a conviction that was in them, saying, you know what, we can no longer live the way we've been living. They were cut to the heart. And, and, and it was said, they said to him, what, how then, what then shall we do? Some, some other versions of the Bible says, how then shall we live? They knew they couldn't live the same way. There had to be a change. And Peter says, repent. Meaning, turn away from your old life and, and, and turn to Jesus Christ and be baptized. Meaning, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. And see, that's what God calls us to. There needs to be a change in our lives. Without life change, and I'm not talking about a legalistic sense. I'm not talking about whether or not, you know, um, whether or not you're saved or not. But I have to question your faith. I have to question, is it that, that dynamic faith? Is it that overcomer's faith? Is it that victorious faith that he calls us to? I'm not here to doubt your salvation. That's not for me. But I want, what I would love for you to do is whether or not how much faith have you put in the work of the cross. If your life is still the same from before you gave your life to Jesus to, to now, then you have to actually question, what am I putting my faith into? If God calls me to this life that is vocal, if God calls me to this life that is relational, if God calls me to this life that is that is that is life changing, and and none of this is true, none of this has manifested in it in my life in my walk with Christ now. Well, then what needs to change? It's not for me to say whether or not you're saved. You you'll know. If you're saying that you're saved and you truly aren't, then I believe that God will show you. I believe that God, the, the Holy Spirit of God will convict you and start to bring about changes in your, in, your, in, your, in your life, in your character, and in your decision making. But maybe for, for some of you today, some of you who are, who are Christ's believe, followers, and, and you are faithful in your in your Bible reading, you're faithful in your prayers, but yet none of these is true for you, then I want to pray for you. I, I'm not going to pray for you here online, but I want to I ask you to reach out to me. 
Say, Pastor Daniel, I, I believe that what you're saying is true because you took it right out of the scriptures. And, and that's where you ought to judge what I say is true or not, is because does it come out of the scriptures? And we'll talk about that later on in this series. But what I want to do is I want to reach out to those of you today that, that say, you know what? I need that overcomer's faith. I need to have victory because my life has been nothing but. And you've never given your Jesus a chance. You've never given him a chance to help you overcome, be an overcomer in this world. And be an overcomer in, 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 in your sins. Maybe an overcomer in your addiction. Maybe an overcomer. Ooh, I'm speaking to somebody out there today. An overcomer in your habits. An overcomer in the things that you know aren't good for you. But yet you don't know how to get out of it. You don't know what needs to be done. Give Jesus a chance today. Will you do that? Today I'm calling out to you for those of you who have never put your faith and trust in Jesus. Will you pray with me today? I want to just lead, with, lead you into a very short prayer. There's nothing magical or like, a, like you know, a, a, some magic words about what I'm about to say. But what's divine is what God has put on your heart. And he's leading you to him today. He's the one that's leading you. Not me. I'm just but a messenger. And for, for you, if you've never put your faith in Christ, that I want to I wanna lead you that you may. It starts with a short prayer. Will you pray after me today and repeat, repeat after me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner and I am stuck. I believe, Lord, that you came into this world to die on, my, on the cross, to pay for my sins, to pay for my penalty that I may be set free and that I may be forgiven. I believe on the third day you rose again and that now because you live I can live also forever. I ask you that you give me the Holy Spirit your Holy Spirit that I can live for you the rest of my life. I ask all this in Jesus name amen if that is you today and and you said that prayer with me will you do me a favor will you put at the bottom of this video and say pastor Daniel that was me I, I, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today oh you may not be sure what it is that you did or what you committed to I want to walk you through that and I want to explain that to you in detail I want you to know it's, it's, it's as, as if I'm one of those who are explaining the contract in which you signed, right? And uh, I want to get some material into your hands. I want to get a Bible into your hands. Um, I, I, I want to shepherd you, if I could use that analogy, into what God has for you the next. He calls us to victory. And, and I want to just, you know, lead you and guide you in what God has and where he might be leading you to. I want to get a Bible into your hands. I, I want to... Uh, get you into in, in front of the right people that, that we could all lead you into a place where you can experience victory in your life. If that is you, if, if, you're, if you're listening to this, you can send it to me on, on Facebook Messenger. If you don't want to put that underneath in the video or comment there. Or if you'd like, um, send me an email. If you're listening to this on our, on our webpage and uh, if you want to go ahead and dedicate your life to Jesus, and uh, you're not on Facebook Messenger or you're not on the, 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 the Facebook page for Promise LA, simply do this. Email me at promiselosangeles at gmail.com or simply use the contact page on the website and say, Pastor Daniel, I gave my life to Jesus today. If you would do that, I promise you I will connect with you. I'll be a resource for you for any questions that you may have, uh, that you would live a life that's full of victory, uh, that's, that's full of, of testimony, and you will see God work 
magically and, and, and powerfully in your life. God bless you. I pray that you have a, a, a great Sunday. For those of you that need prayer, for those of you that, that just need to reach out to me, please contact me uh, here on the Facebook page or go to our, um, our, our web page at our website at www.promisela.org or, or simply reach out to me here on, area, on, on any of these ways in, in which for us to connect. And I promise you, uh, we, will, we will connect and, uh, and I will pray for you. Um, I, I will explain whatever, I, whatever questions that you may have that you may live that victorious life in Christ. God bless you. Have a great week. If you need prayer, please let me know. And if you'd like to join us for Thursday night uh, prayer meeting, uh, please like this page or go to our website where you could, uh, um, you know, see some information on how to connect with us via Zoom. Have a great week, everybody. I pray the Lord blesses you, keeps you, and, and may his face shine upon you throughout this next week. God bless you.